In the previous video, we found the transmission coefficient for the case where the energy is smaller than V0. Now we need to solve for the second case where energy is equal to V0. And when energy is equal to V0, we need to go through the entire process once again. First of all, we need to find what xi of x is. So our potential in this case is the same as before. So x, V of x. And then from negative A to positive A, we have a potential equal to positive V0. And then everywhere else, it's just equal to 0. And then right now, our energy level is precisely V0 itself. And so now we need to find xi of x for such a scenario. Now, solving for xi of x, we repeat what we did for the previous scenario, for when e is smaller than v0. We just break up this entire scenario into three different sections. So we have the section when x is smaller than negative a. So that would be this region. And then the region when x is larger than positive a. And also the region when x is between negative and positive a. Now, for these two regions, when x is smaller than negative a and when x is larger than positive a, for these two regions, you'll see that for this scenario, we'll just get the exact same thing as before. So I can just write down what we had last time. So if you don't remember how we obtained this expression, you can check back on the previous uh, section, uh, the part one of this of this problem. And you'll recall that we obtained something like this. And then this expression here is equal to zero because we're considering the case where the particle comes in from the right and either out, either it bounces backwards or it passes through the barrier. So in no situation would you have the particle coming in from positive infinity to the left. So that's why this component here is equal to zero. And so this is what we obtained in the last video. And for this scenario, we just get the exact same thing. And also, uh, I'll remind you that k is equal to square root of 2me divided by h bar. And so this, these two expressions are applicable for these two regions. Now for the region when x is between negative and positive a, we need to solve the time-independent Schrodinger equation. So we have something like this. So we add the potential, and this is equal to e times psi. So, and this is applicable for the region when x is between negative and positive a. And then within this region, our energy level is precisely equal to v0. So this is just equal to v0. So these two expressions cancel out. So in the end, you have d squared xi dx squared is equal to zero. So all the constants can go away as well because everything is just equal to zero. And the solution for such a differential equation is just some constant c plus some constant d times x. And you can easily verify that this is indeed the solution. You can just differentiate this twice and you'll see that it is indeed always equal to zero. And so for this region, when x is between negative and positive a, this is just equal to c plus dx. And so now in order to find the transmission coefficient, we need to now exploit the continuity requirements for xi of x and xi prime of x as last time. And so we're going to do this now. So by exploiting the continuity requirements for these two expressions, we can obtain the relationships between the constants and that will allow us to find the transmission coefficient. So first of all, let's focus on uh, the fact that xi of x is continuous. So we know that xi of x is continuous and so that's why when we substitute in negative a for this expression, it should be equal to substituting in negative a for this expression. So what we get is a times e to the power of negative i k a. So this is just substituting in negative a plus b times e to the power of i k a. This is just equal to c minus dA. So we're substituting in negative a. c minus dA. So this equation here would allow us to make this function continuous. And the same thing also applies when x is equal to a. So we also substitute in a, so we have c plus dA is equal to substituting a here, f times e to the power of i k a. So this is, these are the two expressions that we get by exploiting the fact that xi of x is continuous. Now the next thing we we're going to do is to exploit the fact that xi prime of x is also continuous. And then in order to do this, first of all, we need to compute what xi prime of x is. And we also break this up into the three different parts. And then we integrate, uh, we differentiate the expressions separately. So differentiating this term here, we're going to get i k times a e to the power of i k x, and then minus b e to the power of negative i k x. So there's a minus sign because of the minus sign over here. 
and then differentiating this term, we just get d, the c just becomes a 0, so we just get d. And then for this final term, we just have i k f e to the power of i k x. And now using the fact that this expression is also continuous, we can now substitute in negative a and say that these two expressions should be equal. So we get i k e to the power of negative i k a minus b e to the power of i a positive i k a because we're substituting in negative a. This is equal to d. So substituting in negative a, these two expressions are equal. And then now we do the same thing over here. We substitute in positive a for this expression, which is which should also be equal to d. So we have d is equal to i k f e to the power of i k a. So these two expressions are what we get uh, from exploiting the fact that xi prime of x is continuous. And so now after exploiting the continuity requirements for xi of x and xi prime of x, we have come up with four uh, relationships. So let's just briefly summarize what we have achieved so far. So from the uh, continuity requirement of xi of x, we have obtained the expression c minus dA is equal to a times e to the power of negative i k a plus b times e to the power of i k a. And then we have also obtained c plus d a is equal to f times e to the power of i k a. So this is from the continuity of xi of x. And also from the continuity of xi prime of x, we have obtained the two expressions i k a times e to the power of uh, negative i k a minus b times e to the power of i k a is equal to d. And then we also know that d is also equal to uh, i k times f e to the power of i k a. And so now using these relationships, we can now combine them to find the relationship between a and f, and that would then give us the transmission coefficient. So what we're going to do now is to try to combine these equations together. So the first thing I'm going to do is to take this expression and subtract it with this expression. So on the left-hand side, we have c plus dA, and now I'm going to subtract c and then plus dA. So on the left-hand side, we're left with 2 dA, and then we do the same thing for the right-hand side. We have this expression subtracted by this expression. So f e to the power of i k a minus a e to the power of negative i k a and then minus b e to the power of positive i k a. So I'm just subtracting it with this expression. And then now I can combine these two expressions together because they're all equal to d. So the left hand side, they're both equal. And you can see that both of them have an i k term, so I can just cancel that out. So in the end, this expression inside the bracket is equal to f times e to the power of i k a. So we have a e to the power of negative i k a minus b e to the power of positive i k a. This is just equal to f times e to the power of i k a. And so this is what we get from combining the two expressions together. And so now we're going to try to combine these two expressions together to eventually uh, obtain a relationship between f and a. And then now we can actually do this by applying this uh, by applying this relationship again. So recall that right now what we actually want is to obtain a relationship between f and a. So we, what we want to do is to get rid of this b and to get rid of this b. So the first thing we're going to do is to get rid of this d. And then we can do that by substituting in i k f uh, this expression uh, in place of the d over here. So uh, for this left hand side expression, we're going to get 2 and then we have this expression ikf 2 ikf e to the power of ika so that's just substituting in this expression in play, uh, over here so we also have an a don't forget the a and then this is just equal to the right hand side so let me just copy that out one more time so minus b e to the power of ika and then now we can take this expression and then we can now combine it with this expression. And you can see that we can actually combine them in a way that would allow us to finally get rid of the b as well. Because both of these terms, they have a minus b e to the power of i k a. So if I just subtract these two terms, all we're left with are terms that are f and a. And then I can just rearrange them a little bit, and that would eventually give us the transmission coefficient. And so now let's try to combine the two expressions together. So what we are going to do is that we're going to take this expression and then subtract it by this expression. So on the left hand side we have 2ikf 
e to the power of i k a times a minus f e to the power of i k a. So this is the left hand side, and this is equal to taking this expression and subtracting it with this expression. And first of all, you can see that see that the b terms they cancel out. So in the end, we're left with f e to the power of i k a, and then you can see that these two a terms they're identical. So we have we're subtracting this expression uh, with this expression. So we're going to have negative two a e to the power of negative i k a. And so you can see that we finally obtained expression uh, with only a and f terms. And so we're very close to deriving the transmission coefficient. And you can see that these two f terms, they're identical, so I can just move this to the other side. So this is minus 2, and then you can see that the 2s, they also cancel out. And so we can now simplify this expression into something like uh, negative 1 plus iak, and then times e to the power of ika. So this is just the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we have negative a e to the power of negative Ika, and then might as well we just dump this over to the uh, right hand side as well. So we have negative 2 Ika, and so this is what we have so far. And then just to make this a bit nicer, let's just dump the negative sign to the other side as well. And so this is what we have. And so uh, don't forget that the transmission coefficient is just equal to f divided by a absolute value square. So what we want to find is f divided by a, and so in this case, f divided by a is just equal to e to the power of negative 2 i k a divided by 1 minus a k i. And so this is f divided by a. And now to find the transmission coefficient, all we have to do is to take the absolute value and then square it. So if we take the absolute value and then square it, this is just equal to taking the absolute value square of the numerator and denominator separately. And then for the numerator, uh, we've dealt with this in the previous video. This term here is just equal to 1. Because remember, if we take a the absolute value square of a complex number, we're just taking itself and multiplying it by its own conjugate. And then the conjugate of this term is just e to the power of positive 2 i k a. And if you multiply this term with its conjugate, you just get e to the power of 0, which is just 1. So the numerator is equal to 1. And then for the denominator, you can see that this is a complex number of the form uh, a plus b i. And then if you take the absolute value squared, this is just a squared plus b squared. You can easily prove this by multiplying a plus bi with a minus bi. And then, so using this formula, you can see that the absolute value square of this term, you have this real term and this imaginary term. You can see that the denominator just becomes 1 plus a squared k squared. And then don't forget, k is equal to the square root of 2me divided by h bar. And so k squared just becomes something like this. So we have 2me a square divided by h bar square. And so there you have it. This is the transmission coefficient. And so last time we found the transmission coefficient inverse because I was lazy. Uh, this time we found the actual transmission coefficient so that you, you don't need to take the inverse of this expression. And so there you have it. This is the solution for the case when the energy level is equal to v naught. And now finally, before I end this video, don't forget, we have so far solved the case where e is smaller than v0, and the case where e is equal to v0, but we also have the case where e is larger than v0. But then you actually don't have to worry about this case, because if you solve the time-independent Schrodinger equation for this scenario, so for the scenario where your energy level is larger than v0, of not, v not, you will see that once you start solving the time-independent Schrodinger equation, what you're going to get is pretty much almost the same as what you get for the finite square well, which was solved in the textbook as an example. The only difference is that instead of negative v naught, everything is replaced. Uh, all the negative v naughts are now replaced by v naught. And in the textbook, it was given that the transmission coefficient for the finite square well is just equal to 1 plus v naught squared divided by 4e. And then instead of e plus v naught, as it was in the textbook, we now replace it by e minus v naught, because all cases of minus v naught will be replaced by positive v naught. And so this is what you, you will get. So I'm just using the answer provided in the textbook. And in the textbook, it was e plus v naught, but now we have e minus v naught, because instead of the, inf uh, instead of the finite square well, 
we have the finite square barrier. And so we just replace all instances of v0 with minus v0. And so this is what we're going to get. So for this third scenario, we know that the transmission coefficient is just equal to this expression. And so there you have it. This is the answer for the third scenario.